Okay, um, I'm going to uh, explain briefly uh, our recent paper with Marcoli, which is in the archive, only it's not in mathematical section, but in physical section, so mathematicians usually cannot find it. Uh, a big Bang, a blow up, and modular curves, algebraic geometry and cosmology. Well, I think everybody heard about Big Bang. Our a universe seemingly started uh, in a unique event. There was nothing before. Then suddenly something uh, blew up. And of course, uh, this verb blow up suggests analogy with algebraic geometry immediately. Uh, something blew up, and then somehow this universe started. And uh, it's uh, according to observational data and standard uh, theories, uh, it will end as a very, very large, maybe infinitely <laughs> large and infinitely cold space without anything interesting going on. Uh, so um, uh, recently, well, not very recently, but the last decade or so, uh, Professor Penrose, Roger Penrose, who has a lot of mathematical and physical fantasy, suggested <coughs> that, uh, uh, as a poet said, in my end is my beginning, namely that um, actually before the Big Bang, there was the previous aeon, previous universe, that became very, very big and cold. But then something happened, and uh, there was this big bang, and everything started again. Uh, mathematically speaking, in order to, uh, uh, to invent a model uh, of something like that, one should um, start with uh, uh, explaining uh, what happens exactly at the moment zero and at the moment infinity. And geometrically, it means that we should define some interesting possibilities for future and past boundaries of space-times. And if possible, the boundaries should be such that a uh, future boundary of one aeon should somehow match the, uh, uh, the uh, early boundary zero boundary of the next aeon. That's one thing, and that will be the subject of my, the first part of my talk. Then I will say a few words about observational data, data what is time in cosmology. Uh, and uh, then I will discuss the moment that was central in my uh, idea uh, of how to cope mathematically with all this story, I ask the question, what happens with time at the boundary? And then I'll explain how modular curves uh, enter the picture. This is a mathematical thing, and the mathemat they match the so-called mixed master universe that was invented by physicists and uh, say a few words about boundaries and uh, Roger Penrose uh, crossovers. Uh, so uh, future and past boundaries. Uh, so the general notion of a boundary is uh, uh, quite uh, well known to mathematicians. Uh, if we have a manifold M uh, and uh, Mm, uh, some subset in it, open subset, and uh, then uh, this open subset is embedded into something else uh, as an open subset. And uh, uh, it's embedded in such a way that its closure, it's, it's dense, and so its closure coincides with m bar zero. And then we say that uh, uh, this difference between m bar zero and m zero is a partial boundary of m. It's by no means uniquely defined. Uh, you need an external embedding for it. 
Boundaries are generally used for uh, studying asymptotic behavior of dynamical systems, solutions to differential equations. So in particular, when we are describing classical models of universe satisfying Einstein equations, and we want to study their limiting behavior, we usually add some boundary and then look what happens at this boundary. Uh, but I will uh, start with two very elementary uh, examples. The basic example one is the projective boundary of Minkowski space-time. So M4 is an uh, affine four-dimensional space with a metric of Lorentz signature. Uh, and uh, let's embed it into uh, the... Um, mm, this affine space into its projective space in a canonical way, and then the boundary will be three-dimensional vector space. And basic example two is a blow-up where we replace a point in M4 by the projective space of tangent directions to it. Again, boundary is P3 here. Here there is one subtlety, whether we are imagining a complex case, which is also uh, quite interesting in the uh, Sir Roger context, uh, or whether we are imagining uh, real space. Uh, we can imagine first complex space and then real points of it if there is a natural real structure. But on the other hand, uh, this boundary uh, may, be, uh, may have a non-trivial fundamental group, and it might happen that we should pass from real points of a complex picture to a cover of it. But uh, this is uh, related to possibility of non-trivial orientation in the real case. But these are particularities. So uh, here is the canonical linear model of universal non-relativistic uh, cosmic time. Uh, this is kind of a synthesis of results of observations. So we have, uh, oops, sorry. So we have this vague point of blow up. Then uh, there is a very mysterious period of inflation. So time here goes in the horizontal direction. There is a very mysterious period of inflation which, uh, uh, during which the universe becomes very, very big, but uh, the period itself is something like 10 power minus 3, 32 or 34 uh, uh, seconds. Uh, the uh, cosmologists invented this period uh, in order to explain of course, nothing is observable from this period, but they, they uh, invented this period in order to explain some things that could not be explained otherwise. Uh, first stars appear about uh, 400 million years uh, after the Big Bang. And uh, uh, then uh, there is a period till uh, now which takes about 14 billion years. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> up to approximately this moment, uh, the uh, light did not come to our space section, only later on. Uh, and uh, during this time, we have, so this is dark age, so to speak. Then here, development of galaxies, planets, and so on. And uh, here, very essential dark energy becomes an accelerated expansion. Now, uh, of course, I have absolutely no time and uh, competence to discuss details of many of these strange happenings. But what I want to discuss a little bit is uh, mathematical correlates of the idea that there is some kind of uh, cosmic time, cosmic time. Uh, this is pretty strange from a mathematical viewpoint, and I will return to it uh, a little bit later. But right now, using this picture, I will illustrate 
what uh, two boundaries I suggest to add to any mathematical picture of this observational one. Uh, at the uh, cold end of the uh, universe, uh, uh, I presume that uh, it is well approximated by flat Minkowski space, although there is matter, there are some curvatures and things like that, but globally it's well approximated by Minkowski space. And therefore, the future boundary can be approximated by the simplest boundary of Minkowski space, namely uh, three-dimensional projective space. Uh, now, it carries one, so time infinity, uh, moment of time infinity corresponds to the section P3, uh, but there is one additional structure there, uh, uh, namely, so to speak, uh, infinite uh, sky. Po the point is that if we take any moment of space-time in the Minkowski space, and then draw the whole cone of uh, light cone, the whole light cone from this uh, point, uh, then uh, at P3 they will have all one common base. Because, say, if you look at this light cone and at this particular light ray, and then this one and the parallel light ray, then, at the end, they have the common point. And this common point will be the point of this infinite sky. On the other hand, at the moment of zero, I imagine that I have some classical geometric picture of this space. I take this point of Big Bang and I blow it up in the algebraic geometrical sense. So there, uh, it was my manifold with uh, Lorentz signature metric. Here is this point. I blow it up, and when I blow it up, instead of a cone, I get something like hyper hyperboloid, and then I get the new P3, uh, which takes place of this uh, plane and uh, this point. Sorry and the, uh, its intersection, its, its base in the tangent space is again this additional structure in this P3. So we see that these two simple mathematical procedures give boundaries at the beginning and at the end of the same structure, P3 and uh, uh, sky sphere. Okay, now I want to discuss what is this mysterious cosmological time. As I said, uh, this is an abstraction invented by cosmologists. Uh, the point is that, of course, in relativistic models of space-time, time is a local notion. If you have a time-like geodesic gamma, then uh, differential of local time, time along this geodesic uh, uh, on gamma, is the same as differential of the relevant Einstein metric, restricted upon gamma. So uh, I will always consider Lorentz metric of signature uh, 1, 3, that is 1, pl 1 plus time dt square minus uh, 3 uh, squares of space coordinates. Uh, so uh, on space-like geodesics then, time becomes purely imaginary. We usually imagine that space-like points are on a real distance, but with this convention, uh, the distance is purely imaginary. So if you wish, it's the same time. On uh, light-like uh, geodesics, time stays still. Uh, time is just zero along light-line geodesic. So if you imagine different directions uh, from one point of space-time in various directions, so. Uh, uh, this uh, light cone becomes, uh, becomes a wall. The respective wall crossing in the space of geodesics produce uh, the well-known uh, to physicists the weak rotation of time from real axis to the pure imaginary axis, only, of course, physicists invented it in a totally different context. Uh, but nevertheless, here it is very clear. Now, cosmological time is a theoretical construct. It's not anything like this local times. 
It's a theoretical construct, not unique, and depending on, uh, depending on the choice of model of the way uh, physicists match observations with, uh, uh, with their mathematical model and so on. Here are two important examples that are bridging, uh, bridging theory and observations. Uh, one example is the so-called uh, inverse temperature of the cosmic microwave background radiation, uh, one divided by kT. Uh, it is accepted that the current value of this background radiation measures the global age of our universe starting from the time when we start seeing light. That's approximately as many years after the Big Bang. Before that, uh, it was a pack. Uh, now, uh, this is one way to, uh, to define, so to speak, cosmic time. And another way is the redshift of stars in observable galaxies, and then multiplied by Hubble's constant. This is also a very remarkable uh, um, suggestion uh, or, uh, or a discovery made in the 20s uh, that uh, the red shift uh, is, which in, in the usual way, is proportional to the uh, velocity with which uh, the star goes away from us, but uh, that it is also proportional to the distance to the star. It is the so-called, the coefficient is the, the coefficient is the so-called Hubble constant. Uh, so we have uh, uh, then the, the observable stars and galaxies uh, now are put to various cosmological time sections of our universe. universe. Uh, so this is the Sloan Digital Sky uh, Survey. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to uh, to uh, see well the uh, colors here. The point is, so here we are, this is Earth. Each point that you see here is a galaxy, and the red date is the older are stars of this galaxy. The red date is the older are stars. The, here is the outer circle, it's approximately the distance of two billion light years. And uh, white sectors contain unseen galaxies. They are abstracted by dust, the so-called dust, such a dusty matter in our own galaxy. So mm, this kind of uh, observations, radio telescopes and things like that, big computers, of course, uh, produce the basis of the reconstruction of the model of the universe before that. And uh, uh, when I produced this slide, I found, uh, to my amazement, that the scientific picture of observable universe bears an uncanny resemblance to Marcel Duchamp, classics of modernism. New descent dans un escalier. So the lady here uh, is drawn at the various moments of her getting down the stairs. Of course, for Duchamp, the motivation was the uh, new uh, uh, media movies and things like that, but <laughs> our universe behaves in a similar way. We see it in various moments of its existence. Uh, now, <clears throat> I will uh, describe, so I have described approximately to what we want to apply our mathematical models, how do we produce boundaries, past and future of our models. And now I want to explain uh, the idea that when time is on the boundary, then time becomes uh, purely imaginary, but this weak rotation uh, in various mo in two different models either happens instantly or else is mediated by the movement of time along the hyperbolic along a hyperbolic geodesic in the complex half plane. So, in the complex complex half plane, we have real axis, imaginary axis, and uh, time 
can just uh, the, the, the zero from imaginary become, become real or vice versa. Or uh, it, uh, this jump can be modeled by uh, go going along the geodesic. Uh, here a little bit uh, mathematics. Mm, so first of all, one of the standard cosmological uh, models uh, of universe is the Friedman Robertson Walker one. Uh, such a time is a product of uh, uh, axis of uh, cosmological time t and three space of constant curvature k, one minus one or zero. Uh, that at the moment t is rescaled by a, f a factor. Uh, to find this factor, we should. Uh, solve uh, Einstein differential equations in various models. So we have this signature metric and depending on the curvature we have this value for coefficients s and r as I said uh, depends uh, on the chosen solution. So dynamics then is described by one real function r of t. It increases from zero at the Big Bang to infinity and this is the scale r equals to 1 now. Uh, now, if one writes uh, uh, the differential equations that constrain r of t, uh, the following refers to the, cosmolo the so-called cosmological constant 3. Uh, then, uh, in the strange way, I was very much uh, 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 impressed when I've seen the equation of an elliptic curve. Physicists usually do not know what is an elliptic curve and cannot recognize its uh, equation when they see it, but for me it was a key uh, moment, a decisive moment. I found out that what I thought about imaginary time somehow matches very well uh, this appearance of this elliptic curve in the uh, equations and moreover uh, uh, they then model the global time besides the proper time t from which we started and the scale factor r of t. Uh, they introduce a uh, very natural again for a mathematician uh, uh, time, cosmological time, which is the integral of the differential of the first kind uh, along uh, a real curve from zero to uh, present moment R of t. Coefficients a and b here are characterizing matter and radiation sources, so they also depend on time and uh, in concrete situations they, uh, they differ depending on what kind of what kind of conjectures you assume. But now the qualitative summary in the Robertson Friedman Robertson Walker uh, universe, the time evolution is described by a real curve on an algebraic surface. So it's uh, uh, not universal, but versal surface having all elliptic curves on it. Uh, uh, this, uh, there exists, of course, a very well known to mathematicians versal family of elliptic curves, which is parametrized by the upper half plane. And just, just take a point to uh, take in C uh, the uh, lattice generated by 1 and 2, and take the quotient. Uh, this group acts upon the whole family in this way, and quotient by subgroups are usually of finite index, are modular curves. They parametrize also other versal families. Okay, and uh, below I will show that as soon as we have this picture of cosmological time in our minds, uh, we can understand uh, 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 a different picture of universe near Big Bang, which is called the so-called Mixed-Maxter universe. Uh, so we will be imagining it as a statistical dynamics approximation to an unknown quantum field or string picture of the Big Bang. Okay. So, a new subject matter. What is a mixed master universe? Uh, as I want to say, is, uh, wanted to say is it is a, an, a, a certain classical dynamical system with chaotic behavior, 
uh, which approximates the behavior of a set of certain pretty simple solutions uh, near, but near the Big Bang. That's the point. Uh, so we will take uh, the so-called Bianchi 9 uh, space-time, uh, which has a so symmetry of its space like sections, and essentially its main difference from the Robertson-Walker model is that now we had there, say with, when, when we had a positive curvature, then we had essentially a sphere here, only the radius has been changing. But now we have an ellipsoid. Each axis can have a different coefficient of expansion, A, B, T, A, B, C. They are called scale factors, and there exists a fantastically simple family of the so-called Kastner solutions to Einstein equations. They're just powers of t, or these three coefficients are just power of t, and uh, this pi are points on the real algebraic curve, uh, which is, of course, just, just a circle. Uh, the metric becomes singular at t equal to zero, which is the Big Bang moment. Okay, now in the 70s, Belinsky, Halatnikov, and Lifshitz argued that if we consider not specific Kasner solutions to this model, Bianchi 9 model, but kind of typical solution, and move not from the Big Bang to infinity, but in the reverse direction, when we look at the typical solution that goes back, backwards in time, then uh, this typical solution to this model can be described by an infinite sequence of Kasner solutions. That is, infinite sequence of points P1, P2, 3 on this real circle. Uh, the space of the sequences is endowed with symbolic dynamic that encodes the logarithmic time dynamic of the relevant Bianchi spaces. And uh, uh, it was discovered quite early that formally the same symbolic dynamic encodes geodesics with irrational real ends and complex upper half plane H and their projections to the modular curve. Uh, in uh, this paper with Matilda, our probably one of the main suggestions besides uh, suggesting this relevance of the uh, imaginary time during the um, transition periods. Uh, a certain <clears throat> suggestion how to explain this coincidence, the dynamics, symbolic dynamics of Kasner solutions and the symbolic dynamics of geodesics. So we argue that the identification of these two dynamics reflects the picture of physical time undergoing, as I said, reverse week rotation mediated by the movement along hyperbolic geodesics. So uh, now I have yet some time so I can give some details about these two different encodings. So one encoding is BK, BKL encoding of Kasner errors. Uh, so we introduce here the reverse logarithmic time. As I said, there are many cosmological times. So introduce this one. Uh, when omega goes to plus infinity, um, uh, plus infinity, this means that we go backwards to the Big Bang. And uh, uh, BKL argued that a typical solution uh, determines a sequence of infinitely increasing moments, omega 0, omega 1, omega n, and the sequence of irrational real numbers un. And during one semi-interval, which is called nth Kasner era for a given trajectory gamma, uh, the evolution of ABC is approximately <clears throat> described by several consecutive Kasner formulas. Time intervals where scaling powers, powers are constant are called Kasner cycles. And the evolution in the nth era starts at a time omega n with a certain value u n. And uh, this determines the, u, the value of u determines the respective scaling powers. 
P1, P2, P3. Here they are. Uh, then the next cycles inside the same era start with values U minus 1, U minus 2, and the respective scaling powers. And after as many cycles inside the current era, a jump to the next era comes with this parameter. This means that the natural encoding of all UN together is obtained by just considering an irrational number x together with continued fraction decomposition. And that the time flow is modeled by the powers of this discrete shift. Just very simple. And uh, Xn is this. Uh, so uh, in order to, now this is inside one error. So what happens at the next moment? We introduce an additional parameter delta n that uh, uh, translates omega n into new value m omega n plus one. And then the information about both sequences together is actually, <clears throat> Uh, modeled or encoded by powers of the shift of two-sided sequences of natural, natural numbers. When we didn't look at uh, uh, the omega, then we got only one-sided, and here it's two-sided. And the arrange, rearrangement of coordinates like that in the increasing order induces generally a non-identical permutation of coefficients. And uh, when u diminishes by one, the old permutation is multiplied. The old permutation is multiplied by this one, and when we pass to the next error, then this permutation occurs. Now uh, I will show you that the geodesic flow on modular surfaces um, is very naturally encoded in exactly the same way. Exactly the same way. Uh, uh, we consider geodesics in uh, upper half plane that are intersecting uh, the uh, imaginary half line. If we take such two-sided infinite sequences of Ks, then we uh, define using it uh, the geodesic going from initial point x minus, which is between minus 1 and 0, to the uh, uh, end point, which is uh, in the interval between 1 and plus infinity. And here are precise definitions of this. And the relevant <coughs> Poincaré section for uh, this uh, symbolic dynamics on one of these uh, curves is essentially the projection of the imaginary semi-axis of H to M. Here are a few words. So on H, we see um, tessellation by fundamental domains for PSL to Z. Uh, and uh, its, its projection, its trace on the real axis is essentially furry tri triangles. So we have three geodesics connecting three rational points or uh, in I, uh, I infinity and uh, two rational points here are uh, furry neighbors. And encoding oriental, oriented geodesics with irrational ends by double-sided uh, sequences, we do it in the following way. Uh, we go, say, from this point on imaginary axis in this direction. Uh, we intersect one triangle of the tessellation and look where is the point I infinity uh, to the uh, uh, right or to the left. Here it is to the left of my geodesics. OK. Then I pass uh, another. Uh, 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 triangle where the respective point is here to the right, then one more to the right, and so on. So we have infinite sequences, and uh, uh, in this context, an explanation of coincidences, a coincidence of uh, these two encodings of solutions, of typical solutions of Einstein equations, and uh, sequences can 
uh, as uh, uh, gets its qualitative explanation, namely I'm postulating that return of the cosmological time to its real values is mediated by a stretch of hyperbolic geodesic. But of course, we never choose any concrete geodesics. We consider the whole dynamical system. <clears throat> and in this way, uh, we get statistical, classical statistical description, which should be, uh, in principle, the trace of unknown for us quantum development. Uh, well, a small warning when we embed the real curve to or using invariant of elliptic curve that I have shown, we must use the coordinate rather minus i to and think about right complex of plan rather than upper one, but this doesn't matter much. Okay. Uh, now uh, I am returning to boundaries and crossovers. Uh, the remark I made at the very beginning about mathematical isomorphism of two boundaries endowed with their skies, future boundary of asymptotically flat space-time, and past blow-up boundary modeling Big Bang. And uh, uh, I'm arguing here that it may be used to furnish a mathematical model of what Penrose calls conformal cyclic, cyclic cosmology. So this is Penrose's picture of expanding universe, approximately the same as uh, was at the very beginning, only very schematic, and now times goes up instead of to the right. Uh, so we have Big Bang. Somewhere here is very, very brief but, but enormous inflation period. We are somewhere here. Space section can be uh, finite or compact. Uh, or infinite, and uh, here are the data that I have already explained as observational data in the initial picture. Here, just the picture taken from Penrose's book. And uh, what he suggests is that somehow, uh, as the previous universe ends, somehow the new one starts. And uh, his mathematics, mathematics that he suggested, considered, uh, uh, that he suggested, uh, concerns uh, matching not actual geometry of space, but uh, the relevant Einstein metrics. Namely, uh, he essentially is saying that when we go to this boundary from the past, Oh, uh, that is from the, from the future of previous Aeon, or backwards to the past of current Aeon, then the metrics match in the following way. They become conformally equivalent, but uh, the conformal factor tends to zero in one case, it tends to infinity in other case, is his, his conformal rescaling. Intuitively, I think it agrees with the pictures that we suggest, namely that uh, that uh, our past and future boundary get blown together. If one uses the Penrose picture of twisters, so the metric can be uh, then matched um, in, in a conformal way. But generally, our picture is this: assume that we have two models of space-time m minus for the previous aeon, m plus for the next aeon, and m plus must be endowed with a point, big bang point. Big bang point. Uh, of course, there is nothing invariant about this point uh, as soon as we are considering the four four-dimensional space only when we introduce the cosmological time, only then we can say, ah, this is moment zero. Before that, just any big bang point. We construct then a partial compactification of a minus by three-dimensional projective space or a subdomain in it. Construct the algebraic geometric blow up m bar m plus and identify the boundary of m minus bar with the part of the divisor of tangent directions. And uh, this will be the crossover wall and identification will be through 
identification of skies, of the respective skies. Uh, this notion that uh, future sky of previous eon somehow corresponds to the past sky of the next eon is very essential for any attempts to produce observational validation or, uh, or fals falsification of this picture. So it's quite important that in our geometric construction it appears in an extremely natural way. Uh, and uh, I repeat that at the moment of the crossover, T infinity previous eon, T0 this one, the cosmological time undergoes a weak rotation, becomes purely imaginary, uh, and then <coughs> undergoes a re reverse weak rotation. And the mix mark star chaotic universe is accommodated here if the reverse weak rotation is mediated by a stretch of hyperbolic geodesic. Thank you for your attention. Include the geodesics uh, in terms of words of left and right, left and right, and so yes. on. Reminded me of how we can run across a mapping torus of a two dimensional torus also by left and right dimensions. Is it just an accident or do you see? No, I mean, this is the <clears throat> particular case of the general Poincare principle. If you have some chaotic movement on a geometric manifold or whatever, how do you encode the typical behavior? You choose a wall, so to speak, and then you count only moments where this geodesic or whatever it is uh, uh, intersects this wall. This is, the principle is so universal that it works almost everywhere, but with different choices. So do you see any connection to mapping Tori, or is that an accident? Well, what I do see is uh, really this connection with uh, real curves on universal families of elliptic curves. Maybe one and another themselves are connected somehow. I do not know. Yeah, I, I did not understand why you, you said that this is like a miraculous uh, link between the PKM picture and... Well, because... Uh, you know, yeah. Misner and Chitra in the 70s understood that the BKM picture was a billiard on the hyperbolic space, on the hyperbolic plane. And then the, the shape of the billiard is the art in billiard, which is half the modular billiard. And this generalized to any dimension and to the models coming from. Uh, no, what... what uh, the picture there that you never mentioned, uh, which explains... Well, I mean... Uh, I think that the real explanation is even now not uh, in place because we must have a precise mathematical bridge between solutions of Einstein equations and uh, this picture. Up, up to now, these two encodings exist, so to speak, heuristically and independently. Uh, our suggestion, which is not yet made mathematically precise, is that this bridge between two ways of looking at these encodings should be through considering the time curve as a curve on a family of elliptic curves. This should be uh, uh, verified, proved, or whatever by looking at uh, concrete solutions of Einstein equations, that uh, those that were used by uh, Misner and uh, Bogoyavlensky and Halatnikov and Belinsky, Lifshitz, whatever body. But up to now, the coincidence of this twin coding was only looked as a miraculous coincidence, including the work of Misner, I think. Well. <laughs> Do you say that it's kind of complex analytic continuations of space time around the event is kind of nice? Uh, analytic, complex analytic continuation of space time is kind of nice around the big events and big. Yes, in a way, yes, with, with one. Uh, uh, reservation, namely this strange thing that when you 
do blow-ups in uh, uh, complex geometry and, and real geometry, you get in real geometry this additional uh, covering. But otherwise, yes, uh, complex analytic story is very natural, like like in Penrose's st Twister story. Yeah, because there was some kind of strange suggestion that you know, a woman by Neil Turok about uh, making fine manipulators not around Big Bang, but kind of contours around here. Yeah. Do you understand that it should? I must look at it, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other question? If not, let's thank Yuri Ivanovich again.